We finally got this together. Ev Greetings, everyone on the internet. Uh, you probably saw, you probably saw the old, the previous podcast, and somehow you liked it enough to just go for, for yet another one. So, good on you. But here we are talking about Yu-Gi-Oh. This is actually a part one because part one because. These three topics of Yu-Gi-Oh! can be essentially podcasts in and of themselves, and we are doing them, all three. We're doing the fun one first, the villains. <laughs> With Why me, once time? again, is uh, Dan, Dan Greenheart from What's Tumblr. Up? And from Tumblr as well, Dark Angel of Muses, but for the sake of this podcast, we're going to be calling her Muse. Hello. And who oh boy, we sent we're essentially just really big fans of this series. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, uh, that that became a meme like I was there for like the first episode of the anime. I didn't I did I didn't see but <laughs> season 0, but I was five years old when 5Ds was coming out, so... Uh, but I've been there since. My brother got me into the card game, and we cheated because we didn't actually have any of the cards you needed to complete a deck. But, I um, was there when it got popular. <laughs> I only really got into it after it lost a lot of steam uh, in the middle of Arc 5, and I watched through that, and now I do pretty much nothing but draw that. Makes sense. Yeah. You've, you've probably seen her work if you just look if you have ever searched uh, 5D's fan art on Tumblr. Arc 5. Ar Arc 5. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I still get a little confused when I see that and I always forget it's the Roman numeral 5. <laughs> you can always call it Arc V and no one will judge you. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay, list of villains, list of villains. We're going with the first one in the anime, Pegasus. Oh, okay, God. Pegasus sh showed up episode movie. two with his ring tape. Or what we call freaking psychic beyond the psychics. Or flamboyant cheating man. Yeah. Yeah, he probably should have won, but he decided to play half by the rules of his own game. He still cheated, but he didn't cheat enough to win. And let's face it, let's let's face it, Kaiba Boy is a very funny thing to say. Don't worry <laughs> about that, Kaiba Boy. Well, that actually, I think, <laughs> yeah, became yeah. more of a thing in the movie after Pegasus was more just kind of... Not necessarily a hero, but he would chill out with the main cast and randomly give them assignments to do. Oh, yeah. Uh, at least yeah. I particularly remember in season four when he gave them a ton of money to go to somewhere in California and uh, take a bunch of cards so they could learn about the Oracalcos. Yeah. Also, his name. Also, I have the wiki for this for all the villains just to make sure we have all the double check. We can double check our information up there. His full name is actually Pegasus Maximilian, J. Crawford. Uh, I thought it was Maximilian Pegasus. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Alias is Maximilian Pegasus, Sol Chevalsky, Mr. Pegasus, or funny enough, Pegsy. Pegasus. <laughs> this is worse than when I heard about the Spice Girls broke up. <laughs> So, Pegasus um, is his legal first name. Mm, I mean, most of what people remember about Duel Monsters is going to be from the Abridged series, since that's A, much easier access, and B, uh, in general, 
it's far easier to watch and far funnier to watch, but Pegasus himself wasn't that much of a presence through season one. After he kidnapped Grandpa, we got a few scenes of him with just drinking champagne, but he didn't do too terribly much until Yugi got back to him at the very end of the season. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, the one it was one is that he was the high-class villain. <laughs> yeah. Then again, he is the one who who modernized uh, duel monsters. Yeah. He, his yeah. duel uh, against y Yami or a Tim or whatever you call him is one of the best in Season 1. Granted, Season 1 was the season where they didn't have any rules for the card game yet. Gave me 2,000 life points to have, and there's a monster with 3,000. Well, not even just that, but things like, all right, here's how I'm going to defeat you. I am going to blow up the moon. Uh, <laughs> is, is the moon a card? No. It, it, does the moon affect any part of our game? Technically not. Okay. <laughs> Stone oh, Guardian oh, attack the moon. That is, that's part of a that was part of an equip spell of mine, and somehow the fragments of the moon evaporate the water, making it able to attack, to attack, attack the sea, the sea serpent category monsters, who for, who even though some of them have far more attack than Stone Guardian. Because they were outside of water, they couldn't attack. Yeah, season one of uh, the Duel Monsters anime uh, definitely harkens back to the manga and original anime, where there were less rules and, and more games, and definitely Yami was not as big of a presence. He wasn't even really a separate being until episode 22, uh, and well, Kaiba threatened to kill himself. Uh, by the way, we're not going to be talking about Season 0, even though I want to. Uh, <laughs> beca mainly because people are thinking more for the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! card game, and that's why we got to start with Duel Monsters. Just want to let everyone know. Because I'm going to say this right now, Kaiba was awesome in Season 0. <laughs> Honestly, I prefer him in the, actual, er, in the card game anime, but he also had five more seasons to become a fleshed-out character with better motivations than... I'm just kind of a jerk. Yeah, that was basically it. I mean, he still had the thing where his dad uh, killed himself after he bought most of his company, but that was definitely expanded upon in uh, the series proper. The entire season three of the Duel Monsters anime was completely focused on um, giving time to his backstory, which I guess brings us to our... In the anime, his father's in a computer. Ugh. Okay, <laughs> well, let's see other ones from that original Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Go if we're going chronologically, I guess you could say it would be Bakura. Well, yeah, I guess we'll kind of keep coming back to him, considering there's... A, three of them that are running around by the end of the series, and B, he's the reoccurring villain. But, yeah, no. uh, I mean, yeah, Bakura's we... a lot of people's favorites just because he's probably the quote-unquote smartest villain. He definitely has the most patience. And uh, even after getting th beaten and thrown out time and time again, uh, looking at that time where Merrick made him stab himself, he still managed to survive and come survive and come back. He also was the only one to have actually killed someone in the English version, and it's never brought up again. Yeah, he's, he's truly one of the like a cornerstone in the uh, dark characters of the series. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff that goes on um, that isn't mentioned very much, where Bakura had a sister that it is implied she, uh, evil Bakura killed her, but they never actually go into much depth with that, which is kind of strange. That might have been a manga-only thing, though, so... <laughs> yeah. 
So, like, we're going to be coming back to Rakura because, again, he's a reoccurring villain because he appears af after or even in the middle of every new villain. So after Merrick, after Bakura's first appearance, we have uh, Merrick. And the slightly less evil version through most of season two. Or what I like to call the leader of the cult trope. <laughs> like, yeah, Merrick, it, it was just Merrick at, like, at the beginning. Like, you'd know him originally because he's the guy who's sending all those people after the god cards. Of I which don't think he we actually... Yeah, right. he, yeah. He originally, ha I think he originally had both Raw and Slifer, but I don't know because of plot, he sent one of the minions that had Slifer, and because you, like Yugi Atem or Atem, just beat that minion, okay. he won uh, Slifer. Actually, actually, may, all right. Actually, one of the uh, one of the the follower, the person who had the Slifer card, was a complete blank of space in the mind. That Merrick can control his mind and basically duel him with the Slifer God card. Yeah. That yeah, was I one thing that was kind of fun about the uh, Battle City and Rare Hunters arc is that because Merrick could mind control pretty much anyone, which, you know, he never made use of that later, but <laughs> uh, it definitely. It led to a lot of interesting villain and character designs, like um, Strings, which was the guy full of piercings that you're thinking of who had Slifer, or even some of the rare hunters. Like, I remember there was a tag duel between Yugi and Kaiba, and Mask they had a Sun and Moon aesthetic. Yeah, I think, it was, I think it was the Mask guys. Because <laughs> I remember the four Masked Beasts, and then Res mask of Restrict, rask, rask, Mask of the Spell. Like, that was all their gimmick. And they battled on top of two towers where where if any of them lost, they fell to the bottom. Into yeah. the quote-unquote Shadow Realm, a.k.a. Hell. In fact, if I remember correctly, one of the uh, good duels I remember that was fun to watch was the Dark Magician duel. Is that with Arcana? Yeah, that, I think that's when they introduced Dark magician girl and yeah i think that magician mm -hmm. orange <laughs> yeah they showed the alternate print like i think that's also when they released that's when they first showed the alternate print of dark magician and dark magician girl huh because in the alternate print for dark magician it's red instead of purple but i guess to go back to merrick um Merrick's personality honestly wasn't really very there at the beginning half of uh, season two. He mostly got it after the next Merrick showed up, which I guess we're gonna save for a little bit later. Yeah, because that's later in the Battle City. Yeah. Thing. So, but the original Merrick, um, I guess the most interesting thing that came out of that is that he was related to Ishizu, who seemed to have way more answers than any of the main characters did, although she uh, consistently did not share them for some reason. Because she had the plot that was the Millennium Necklace that allowed her to see the future or some, or some uh, shit like I'm, that. <laughs> I'm going to assume it works like in Steven Universe where she can see the future, but only very, very selectively. Or be proven, like, be, be wrong completely. Yeah, I guess it doesn't help that if it's a Millennium Item, it probably could get cancelled out by other Millennium Items. So she probably couldn't predict the future of the puzzle, the rod, or the ring, and those were the three major players in Battle City. Whenever I think of the Millennium yeah. Ring, I think of a ring, not not the like the necklace that has like spikes. I mean, it's not originally a necklace, just like how the puzzle wasn't originally a necklace. They just kind of had to carry it around with them somehow. Yeah, true. Yeah, like the Millennium Necklace wasn't like like you don't see this until later with Attempts memories, but originally the necklace wasn't even supposed to be a necklace. It was supposed to be like around the face, the forehead. 
Yep. But that would include talking about another villain. But now that we've talked about Merrick, we're going to talk about, again, Dark, again, Bakura. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think we can go back a little bit of Merrick because there's one thing I want to point out. Yeah. He just wanted to ride a motor bicycle. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about I that in his backstory. Ride a bicycle. Bicycle. No. Bicycle. Well, to be fair, if you were stuck in a tomb all your life and your only knowledge of the outside world was an ad you saw on the TV where an American man rode a motorcycle, you'd probably latch onto that too. I would fucking yeah. ride that bicycle. And then in, and I think it was in one episode where they were showing him just going to the stadium where the Battle City Finals were. He rode a motorcycle. He he did his dream. Yeah, before he got stopped by Bakura in an alleyway, which I think you were going to get to. Yeah, we meet Bakura again after that. And then, again, we meet Merrick in the bat in the blimp, which then, before Merrick, the Merrick fight, is again Bakura. Uh, Bakura honestly doesn't do much other than send bones to hell. Uh, yeah. He doesn't actually get too much plot relevance until Merrick uh, gets to our next villain. <laughs> uh, yeah. But there is actually the uh, blimp battle with Merrick. Yeah, it was the blimp battle, but it was... I, I forget, did Dark, Dark Merrick come af after or before the no Noah Kaiba? Uh, oh, Noah Kaiba. It, became, it came before, and then they stopped in the middle of Battle City to have the Noah Kaiba season, and then at the very end, they went back to Battle or technically went back to Battle City. It was paced very weird. Yeah, so we have Noah Kaiba, the technically real uh, biological son of didn't Kaiba's we skip dad. Yami Merrick? Or like, we... Uh, I honestly did not remember Yami Merrick. He was the main villain of s the latter half of I season think two. That is actually, actually uh, him being so, uh, it's when uh, it's when uh, J uh, Joey beats the fake Merrick. Uh, yeah, after Odeon and Joey get struck with lightning, o Odeon doesn't wake up, and the trauma induces Merrick to. Uh, go to a split personality that is freaking yeah. insane. Which is yeah. kind of interesting because it's not a spirit like in with... Uh, yeah, it's with not the Millennium Rod. Rod. It's yeah. actually just years of trauma and abuse manifesting in a split personality. Powered by the Rod. Which, which very disturbingly enough, tortured Mai by essentially containing her in a... In a Double pyramid hourglass with her drowning in sand, crying uh, out for her friends for help. That theme is torture. That what? Well, that wasn't what he was technically doing. That was just a visual representation of how he was slowly taking away her memories. But yeah, still. but still, it was kind of messed up. No, yeah, the, all of his duels, like with Joey and and with Mai, they're torture. Like they burning Joey, freaking pointing the. The Wheel of Agony? Oh yeah, that's another fun thing about Yami Merrick. He would have lost to Joey if Joey hadn't collapsed. Joey would have won if he hadn't fallen unconscious. Against a god card. Well, the god cards are, I suppose, good in context of the original series, but considering they take three monsters to get out and you don't have many effect monsters in your deck, it doesn't make that much sense. Yeah, like, <laughs> when they first came out, they were broken as all hell, but... I even now, wouldn't say that, it's... because, again, three tributes, and you didn't have much of in the way of special summons back then. And the first duel with Slifer is, uh, Yugi prove its humongous weakness. <laughs> you need to keep all the cards in your hand in order to have it be... Yep. So it's incredibly high attack. But I guess back to Yami Merrick, stay on topic. Um, they, he made Merrick a lot more interesting, just his existence and the reveal of Merrick's backstory with Odeon and Ishizu. Yeah. Because I think it was at that point that Ishizu revealed that she was Merrick's sister. Yeah. 
I mean, I do remember a particular scene where she's sitting staring out a window and uh, Yami Merrick just kind of comes in to say, Hey, I got your brother's body. What you gonna do about it? Probably nothing. Okay, cool. Yeah. Like, she's determined, but at the same time, she's chill as fuck. <laughs> and she doesn't really do anything except sort of convince Kaiba gods are real. By giving him one? <laughs> like, immediately? Well, he... I think she expected him to give it back. He didn't, though. Because he sacrificed a god card for blue eyes white dragon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck's beating Yugi with this god card. I want to beat him with my blue eyes. Blue eyes is better, though. It yeah. Is. In fact, the isn't uh, the ultimate dragon, the fusion of the three blue eyes, stronger than Obelisk? Uh, in the terms of attack, probably. I forgot what Obelisk's effect was. I need to look that up. Oh, it absorbs two other monsters. It absorbs their attack points. Oh, well, then theoretically, Obelisk is more powerful, but... But you need, um, but you need at least, like, another... You need four monsters on the field. Yeah, and that is a pretty difficult thing to do. Granted, Blue Eyes isn't great. You still need three tributes for that thing. Two. Or two yes. tributes? Yeah. yeah okay, it's I'm... Tributes, eight, but you nine, need three. Three blue a, eyes for the seven ultimate. Seven and eight. Uh, right. Star monsters. Blue oh. eyes ultimate dragon sucks. I don't know why <laughs> Seto used that. Granted, uh, the biggest thing people remember him using that in is when he completely cheated in the original episode. Didn't use a polarimization. Didn't summon the other two. He just summoned a blue eyes ultimate dragon. Yeah, I think that was the thing back with the original. You didn't like before Battle City, you could you could just summon all of the fusion monsters. Yeah, yeah. and in Battle City or before Battle City, there was also a rule. You weren't allowed to attack until your opponent had a monster on the field. So theoretically, if you just never summoned anything, your opponent couldn't kill you. Basically, it was a Mexican standoff. <laughs> yeah. And it was, I think it was after Battle City where they just said, oh, that monster you summoned, even though it was a fusion, fusion for con for those who didn't know, you, they said, oh, you need the tribute to summon that monster that's, high, that's above four stars, even though the card was a fusion. And I think it was later in Battle City where they just introduced fusion. I'm the glad they used Joey for that concept of of teaching the rules of the game. Yeah, well, Joey, I think uh, the creator of the series, Kazuki Takahashi, said Joey's the strongest character in the series. By character-wise or by duel-wise? I think, like, in terms of everything, but duel-wise, he's pretty good. Like, I mean, a Tim's definitely good in ter terms of he's able to cheat. <laughs> Because of his sheer force of will, but in terms of just people who normally play the game, it's probably Joey. Yeah. Because Joey doesn't have protagonist powers. Yeah, he doesn't have protagonist powers. He's not uh, spiritual at all. He can't will card to the top of his deck, and he still has a pretty good win record. And I don't he did think be... I ever saw him in the ancient Egypt in the saga. Uh, Joey was there. But, yeah, like... There wasn't a past version of him, but... Yeah, exactly. He don't, there was no past version of him. Yeah, there was no past version of any of the uh, Yugi's friends. Wow. Except for Kaiba, even uh, though he's not well, a friend. That was, that, I mean, that was foreshadowed all the way back in Season 2 with the giant rock. Your yeah. destiny is to play card games with the Pharaoh for eternity. Why do you think you Well, like shit. Card? That's the worst destiny I could have got. But no, the only people who were part of the Pharaoh's Council were, like, side characters, like Ashizu, Grandpa, um... Kaiba. I think... Yeah, Kaiba, Odeon, and the Dark Magician. Yeah, Dark Magician, with his... with Atem's best friend being Dark Magician Girl. Yep. 
And everyone dies because it's the past. Yep. And a lot of blood, actually. Mm-hmm. And... Okay, so we talked about Pegasus. We talked about Merrick, Noah. No, we didn't talk about Noah. I interrupted you. Okay. Noah, the detour season. Uh, Uh, I mean, his entire purpose was just to flush out Kaiba's backstory and be a huge reference to season zero, Kaiba. Can I say um, the idea of a dual monster master is a great idea. It was definitely cool. Uh, Yeah, but never brought back up ever again. Well, Well, I think it's A, because, you know, they would have had to reprint all the cards with master effects, and they didn't want to do that, and also the gimmick wasn't that well fleshed out. It wasn't well fleshed out, and I think it was another... Like excuse to bring back the five head honchos that tried to to try to throw a coup at Kaiba Corp. Yep. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, them. I guess they're also technically big villains in season three of the original. Like, they. The, the virtual world arc, right? Virtual world arc, yeah. They just needed a body. Yeah, they had bodies in the virtual world arc. They formed the the five very dragon. Com- yeah, the five. The card abbreviation. the The card name is T dot E dot D Dragon. I think. Uh, I know that it's just dragon. one dragon with five elemental dragon necks and heads. I think it's just called Five Headed Dragon. Yeah, it's just called the Five Headed Dragon. Oh yeah. Well. Well, five-headed dragon. They form five-headed dragon. They have the bullshit. Oh, because we're this dragon, and we have a car, a quote-unquote field spell, spell. Even though it's literally just Lord of Dragons, Lord of Dragons face on the floor, saying that you can't summon anything that isn't a dragon. Well, I'm sure that the Arc Five villain would have been very, very happy. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be like 50 hours away. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what do you... Th- so, those of you still watching at this point, you probably know why I said part one. <laughs> so much content. So much content. This is a series that but... you would need a very empty stomach and brain to fill completely. I guess uh, to Noah's personality... He was kind of just a brat. Like, yes, he was a brat with a bra- tragic backstory, but, well, everyone in this series has a tragic backstory. But this one was kind of a little bit sad. Yeah. Well, a little bit. so was Pegasus losing his wife. So was Merrick being tortured for most of his life. Uh, it's. I don't think that Noah had anything especially sad about just dying in a car crash. No, that's the thing. Like, basically, Yu-Gi-Oh's villains are are uh, bad, bad, sad backstory. Of the game. Yeah, I bit. mean, the entire <laughs> going back to it, the entire backstory of the main villains in Zexel in Arc Five, they that's just tragedy incarnate. Yeah, when after after Noah, well, we go back to. I believe it's either Dark Merrick or Dark K- B- Bakura. Uh, Dark Dark Bakura gets put out of commission before the Noah arc. Uh, uh, freaking... God, I'm going to say this right now. How can uh, B- B- Dark Bakura have a spell card equivalent to uh, to the uh, the Exodia? Oh, the, the Necrofear thing? There's a lot yeah. of different uh, insta-win condition cards. Almost none of them are meta, though. Yeah, but none of them were. Yeah, none of them are exactly meta because it's like, uh, like instant kill, like Exodia, except for the Necromancer card. Um, like I mean, it's pretty hard to get the entire word out on the field if I can remember correctly. No, it's actually quite easy because you could just need these five turns. Yeah, five yeah, turns. You can kill someone in two. 
<laughs> yeah, until until like the meta shifts back to what Vrain's meta is. Uh, Vrain's meta right now is Trick Stars, which I'm really loving because I uh, I made that deck, but. Uh, two dual monsters in the original card game. Uh, yeah, so Dark Bacor got put out of commission, so now we're on to Yami Merrick again, who spent the good portion of Season 3 just being very confused by doors. He also, yeah. got, he also got to kill a robot, though. Or a few. Yeah. And... Murdering robots. But yeah, so Yami Bakura or Yami Merrick, didn't actually do too terribly much. He did um, put Joey in a coma for a little while, but that was only because Joey would have won. And then uh, Seto versus Atem. And I guess the way that they beat Yami Merrick was really cool, animation-wise and card game-wise. Like, using all of the god cards to strangle him and force his other spirit back into his body. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Wait, hold on. This is going to be a thing asking right now. Are we going story-wise or by uh, when the story was released-wise? Uh, we're going by how when the villains appeared for each. Uh, so yeah, we're going chronologically. <laughs> okay, so does that mean we're going to be talking about... Uh, uh, I think. Uh, yeah. I don't think we're talking about the manga no. Uh, no. No, we're not talking about the manga. We can have a whole separate podcast about the manga. So after the final <laughs> battle with Art with Battle City with Seto Kaiba, I think that's when we got introduced to darts. Yeah, the Ori Kalkos darks, and we had uh, the British guy uh, Raphael. And the dude with purple hair and the crop top. They yeah. had really good backstories and actually semi-decent personalities. I just can't remember anything they did because the British guy was in love with my Valentine. That was pretty much his entire character. The guy with the crop top was in uh, Iraq and Seto Kaiba gave it guns. Or Goza Burrow Kaiba gave it guns, which he now oh, blames Seto Kaiba for. Oh wait, Valen. Valen is the one that has a crush, crush on my... Yep. Oh, and I guess we can also talk about Mai, too, now. She was a good villain. Like For a very, very brief time, she was a villain. Oh, no, she was a villain for at least, like, 10 to 15 episodes. Oh, I mean, yeah, Grand for Yori Kalka, Mark. Yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, it, it was good finally exploring, like, her character and then getting more definite her, on her relationship with Joey. Because they never quite make it canon, but they're, like, acknowledging that she's a 20-something woman and he's a teenager, and they'll figure that out later when they're both older. Yep. Um, and then... The concept of the, uh, of the car, of spell cards having a human soul sacrifice, really, I really like that because it brings me back to the uh, Season Zero again. Yeah, it definitely... Um, the stakes with the Ori Calco stools were much better because Shadow Games kind of removed some agency from it, uh, where, you know, the per person whose soul's at risk was often just the person who was challenged and not the person who started the, cha the Shadow Game. But with the Ori Calco arc... It is a definite, one of our souls is getting sent to the Leviathan, and if I lose, it was entirely my fault. I guess this is also the season where um, a Tim was technically evil for two episodes, and that was an interesting thing to explore. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say evil. I would say he was more, less merciful. He was selfish. Yeah. Very selfish. And also, you hear more of the Tem's voice than uh, Yugi. Yugi. Yeah, well, Yugi is gone for most of the season. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, I guess it's just interesting because I don't know if this was specifically brought up in season four, but it is a thing in the series that they do wonder uh, about a Tim's past. If he can't remember who he was, was he ever really a good person? And Raphael definitely brings that question to light. 
And I do like the conclusion they come to where it's like, well, at least I think this is the conclusion they came to. It's been a long time since I've seen dual monsters where like, it doesn't matter whether or not he was an evil pharaoh because he's a good person now. Yeah. Also, yeah, pharaoh. the other guy who had the grudge with, with Kaiba, he was called Amel Amelda. Amelda? That's a girl's name. And it's a he in, in the dub. Oh, wait, no. Oh, yeah, because yeah, um, his younger brother, Miruko, was killed by was killed by Darts disguised as Gonzaburo Kaiba. Oh, that was Darts' fault. Right, because we can't have... Uh... Wait, well, that doesn't make sense, because Gonzaburo was already shown to be a terrible person, but I guess we needed to have Darts have more of a reason to be evil. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Darts himself, uh, he killed his family, and those... I, his dog, his sister, and his dad, I believe, were in the Valley of Souls. Yeah, he... You know he's evil because he killed a dog. <laughs> um, yeah, fuck the rest. He's just basically the cultist, like... Yeah. Which actually he, brings up the question, did all of Atlantis actually just worship the Leviathan? Uh, I don't know. There's a reason that Atlantis is lost and dead. Yeah. Yeah, I think after darts, it was the Orichalcos god itself. Leviathan, yes. Yeah. So we went from a... So after we defeated the, the cultist to a god that we thought we defeated by just defeating his cultist, nope, turns out he succeeded, and now we're fighting said god. <laughs> Well, it'd be disappointing if it never got revived. All this hype all season, getting all these sacrifices, so many people lost. Alright, he never gets revived. It's like if Zork didn't get um, at least summoned by the end of the series. Yeah. Which again, we're going by... Like, that, that brings up another interesting villain that is so ridiculous that we have to save it for for end. For the end of the Yu -Gi original Yu-Gi-Oh arc. So after after Orichalcos God, uh, are I, we doing Capsule Monsters? Yeah, we're gonna count Capsule Monsters. But I think uh, after Orichalcos God, I think that's Zork. Uh, Capsule Monsters chronologically happened before that, uh, but it's weird because it only aired in the U.S. To my knowledge. What? Yeah, it only aired in the U.S. I tried to find other versions of it. It There was only a U.S. version. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just so, <laughs> okay, we can talk about the villain now. Essentially, Alexander the Great. <laughs> yep. Al evil personality. The evil dark thought. Evil dark thoughts and intentions of Alexander the Great as a the villain. The conqueror of Macedonia. <laughs> <laughs> like when I was like, okay, what's this like good guy? What is the voice of this good guy that's helping us throughout the entire season? And then I'm like, and then it, they show it to be Alexander the Great. And then it's like, okay. So he's I mean, the villain, and then it turns out to be his dark thoughts and emotions that somehow ruling the souls of his friends. It is honestly amazing how ca far removed Capsule Monsters is from the rest of the series. It's a blatant ripoff of Pokemon. They even have a little electric buzz type monster that accompanies uh, Tristan. And yeah. then the animations looks different, like they uh, sent it out to a different studio. It only aired in the U.S. This arc is so far removed from um, the rest of the series, I'm kind of amazed that it aired at all. Yeah. I'm surprised that and, it didn't get a cult following, or a, a spinoff of it. Yeah, I think that it also had the I think that it also had the rule that if the main monster you started out with dies, you actually take a lot of damage physically. Yep. I remember there were flower wolves that attacked them. Oh, and uh, Grandpa was actually a main character in this season. He tagged Summon along. Skull. Yeah, he was a he was a main character. Uh, Too bad I he guess... almost, 
<laughs> Too bad he almost got a heart attack when, uh, when I think it was Alexander destroyed Summon Skull. Yep. It's honestly, looking back at this arc, it mattered so little to the plot. So Alexander the Great had the Millennium Ring, and that is pretty much the only simil reason that this is included in the plot. Otherwise, this was kind of just a detour. At least the virtual world arc was Kaiba's arc, and we got to see his backstory. This was just to capitalize on Pokemon's popularity. Yeah, also, it was the first... I love the fact that uh, we made a Yami Alexander. Yeah. <laughs> Yami Alexander the Conqueror. <laughs> yeah. With the good al uh, alias of Alex Brisbane. <laughs> I am not surprised with the reaction to in someone from Japan watching that. <laughs> yeah. So, I think after Alexander the Great, we have Zork. Um, which is technically Thief King Bakora. So, let's unravel this mess because there are three Bakoras running around at the end of the series. Oh, are we talking about. Oh, okay, yeah. No. Zork yeah. is Thief King Bakora, yeah. So, the one with the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> the one with the dragon penis. Uh, <laughs> you want. You want uh, uh, I think. Should we. Hold on one second. Uh, can our editor please tell us if you can show this picture for about five seconds for, so that everyone can know what the heck we're watching, seeing? Yeah, and don't look up the four kids one, because the four kids one censored the living hell out of that. Well, all it did was make it so it went up to his chest, and you honestly still get the same effect. Yeah, they tried to make it so that it was all one unified flab of skin. So that, didn't make it e that didn't make it better. Yeah. Technically, he's not Thief King Bakora, but he's he was summoned by him. He's got the same will as him, and I think they probably I think they were voiced by the same person. Yeah. Let's yeah. see. Oh, well, I guess Yami Bakora is him. It gets weird because, again, there's three of him running oh, around. Uh, apparently Zork his Zork name Zork. is Zork Necrophades. Yeah. Uh, does he have his own card? Zork Necrophades, if you want to get really technical on the pronunciation. He does not have a card. And fun fact about Zork, I, I the guy... Kazuki Takahashi designed him while on pain medicines after a recent surgery. And when the manga came out and he was looking at it, he's like, what the hell was I on when I designed this? <laughs> yeah, he was literally high. I think. Uh, pain meds, he was at least not fully there. Okay, so apparently his Japanese... His Japanese voice actor was Yoshitaka Kaizu. Yep. D he does not have Zork does did not have an English voice actor. I'm not uh, his English voice actor was Bakora's. Yeah. But I mean Zork uh, in the anime itself. He I remember there were at least a few episodes that he was a villain and they were ca doing card games, but uh, the big moment he had is he did kill the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Oh, yeah. yeah. After it turns out about, that Blue Eyes White April. Dragon was a literal, a literal white haired, blue eyed girl that Ooh, Past yep. Kaiba fell in love with, I think. Uh, that I it's true. the fact. That they fuse all three uh, dual god cards, or the god monsters, to form a lady. Let me say this again. Ra, Osiris, and Obelisk all combined. A dragon, an e a falcon, and a, a, a really skeletal face-looking man form a lady. Yes! What the f actual fuck? Like, was she? A was oh, that's another insta win card. Was she ever in show? I, don't I think know. she was in show with versus Zork. Huh. 
Huh. I mean, her effect, at least in the game, is you summon this card, you win. She's too powerful. No, she's not. It takes way too much to summon her. Yeah, that was that's a more it's more of a pain to summon her than it is to try to beat her. Yeah. The, the freaking going back to the Egypt saga was confusing on its own. <laughs> like they were was... pulling everything out their asses uh with the Egyptian warriors. Well, they they were establishing the backstories of a lot of things, specifically dual monsters that we did not really need at the moment, and then trying to explain, well, okay, uh, Tim's dad uh, killed a village to make the Millennium Items, except he didn't, and Bakora saw him not kill the village, so the darkness in his heart resurrected a giant dragon god. Yeah. Well, actually, to be fair, this... Uh giant dragon god is actually was, str was getting stronger and stronger by eating the others. Yeah. Like, the whole story, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! The whole story of it went from cards to capsules to literal spirits connecting you. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh! did the stands of JoJo Bizarre Adventure before it was even popular. <laughs> How about that for some things? Although it did keep consistent story arcs so it wasn't complete so it wasn't complete jojo <laughs> so i think that's all of the Yu-Gi-Oh villains from the original series unless we want to count anubis no uh no we're not counting the movie villains uh, unless yeah. you want to talk about paradox but nah I think par I think we could talk about paradox, but that's when we get to that five Bs. Bs. Yeah. So, so now we go to GX, which I'm far more familiar with than Dual Monsters. GX. I believe the first Generation one we meet. Oh yeah, we skipped an entire arc, but that only had Siegfried von Schroeder. But yeah, that that was just Shadow Riders. Arc. No, I think that was like if you wanna get really technical, I guess you could say the first villain was Bailey and Crowler? He wasn't a villain, just kind of an obstacle to overcome. He definitely didn't like Jaden, but, or Judai, I don't know if we're going by dub or sub names, but... Uh, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna go with English for this one. Alright, so he definitely didn't like Jaden, but he was more of an annoyance than anything. The first actual evil villain characters... Sans one-offs were the Shadow Riders. Yeah. And the season four villain, Darkness, because he was technically in season one. And to those who were only wait, only you mean Night Shroud? English... Hold on, hold yeah. On, hold on. I didn't need to say this because this is actually a little bit mad for me. <clears throat> to those who actually watch all the dubbing of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, I can confirm there is a fourth season. <laughs> Most people, I think, know about the fourth they season. Of th me mad. The fourth season was good, but I honestly didn't enjoy it as much because it was completing his character arc of growing up, but it was also so mopey and sad. Like, most of the fourth season is just focusing on how much of a depressed loner Jaden had become. Yeah. But then you have that movie that has him with the spirit, like with Jaden, uh, with Yugi. Er, well, and yeah, I but you could end on season three and still perfectly well assume that uh, the movie just continued off from season three. Because they never explicitly state he dies. They just have Cyrus tearfully saying he went to the stars. And because that was never, you know, technically you death. He went to heaven and you could say he's dead. That's like a acronym for death. Yeah, but, but I then mean, you miss out the awesome fight that he would have had. But I mean, uh, going on bonds beyond time, we can just assume that what you Bell said was true. He became a superhero, and now he just kind of goes around helping people. Yeah. Also, one of the Shadow Riders was actually a side character, Amnail. Uh, was that Banner? Uh, yeah, Li Lyman Banner. 
Yeah, so funny thing about him, in the original sub this wasn't there. In the dub, apparently he claimed that he was cheating in Jaden's favor so that he would succeed more and that Jaden would be nothing without him. He was lying, of course, but it's odd that they put that in there. Um, the Shadow Riders arc was honestly very, still kind of slice of lifey, because uh, they went from episode to episode, still had a lot of jokes. There was no one Shadow Rider that got a ton of focus, and even in the end, uh, the final villain was just a big Duel Monsters reference. Yeah, I think and yeah, also... two of the Shadow Riders were actually very interesting because one of the Shadow Riders, the one with the vampire deck, was actually just Vampire Lady. Mm-hmm. She and turned the people. Other... Go on. She turned people into dolls, I believe. Yes, she can. Ew. Yeah, and the other one was just Amazonus Fighter, and all she did was like, "Hey, you guys build this stadium for me, and I give you red rare cards." Like, <laughs> I think she was probably the chillest out of all of the Amazon, out of all of the Shadow Riders, and she Plus had the, she and she was completely Amazon. Yeah, she turns into a white version of Amazonist Tiger. Oh yeah, Tanya. Uh, Bastion got together with her in the third season. Yep. He, yep, he's a furry. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, and I even enjoyed the du the joke they did in the dub. Like, there's other fish in the sea. Is Are there tigers? So, <laughs> funny story about the main villain from season one. His Japanese name is Kagemaru, which literally means Circle of Darkness. Oh, <laughs> Subtlety! Subtlety. What's that in Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> and, let's see. Do we go with the guy that's literally named... Do we count the guy that's literally named Napoleon Bonaparte? He yeah. wasn't a villain either. He was just along the same vein of Prowler as he didn't like the main characters, and he was kind of he an annoyance, but... Yeah. Oh, yeah, he, Camula. Camula was the vampire lady. Vampire lady, yeah. Uh, I guess we can technically talk about Zane, though he's an anti-hero. I would uh, that. Yeah. Um, uh, GX followed somewhat the same way for uh, school uh, uh, sports sagas, uh, sports anime, where they make one good uh, character better than the protagonist and almost all the time. He's not good yeah. by the end of the series. Zane just progressively gets more insane and more morally gray, and he never really gets out of that. Because season one, he's, you know, top of his class, good student. He's better than Jaden. They end their duel on a draw, and they just go and eat lunch. Um, and then in season two, he uh, discovers BDSM and starts getting into underground duels. Um, yeah. Actually, I think that was because of another villain in season two. The D beat him. Yes, his name is the D. Yes, they constantly refer to him as the D. <laughs> and just see, so like, and now I'm just expecting a bunch of comments going like, "You didn't expect the D." Well, you didn't. His entire deck is the D heroes, and he he has a man inside of his D monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that villain is just gonna be so much. Fun. This villain is so much fun to talk about. Like, yep. wait, 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 wait. Why are we talking? Was that like Tatsuma season Sayu? two has a very we? Uh, no, the D was not Sayu. The D was uh, the guy who killed Edo's father or Aster Phoenix's father. Season two is weird because the villains all kind of work in a mishmash against each other. There's Zane, who's technically a villain in that he does electrocute his little brother. There's the Society of Light in Sayu, which comes in at the, at the beginning and the end and takes a break for the GX tournament. There's Aster Phoenix, who's only a villain by association with the Society of Light. And then there's the D, who killed Aster's dad. But then, uh, <laughs> Like, uh, mainly the character changes from the fir first. All let's say th like right now the side characters can change from season one and season two. Mm-hmm. Uh, continue. Uh, I mean, like I was saying with Zane, 
Sorry. Yeah, I think. Seven oh, three we for fucked up. Oh, I forgot. What about Buran, Buran, Mad King of the Dark World? Uh, that's season three. Yeah. Um, oh wait, oh wait, no. Was Viper the season two villain? There were many villains in season three. Uh, Viper was season three. Braun was season three. Supreme King, Ubel, that's all season three. The jewel oh, okay. monsters. <gasps> also forget, season three. Was it, was it season two that they brought back the Paradox Brothers? Season one. Oh, okay, yeah. Which it was kind of interesting to have them bring back like some old characters. I mean, the entire ending of GX is Jaden dueling Yugi. Yeah. Which I, um, again, mad they didn't have that dubbed. Uh, again. they had legal issues and they wanted to get onto 5Ds. Yeah, yeah and five dicks. we also had um, an imitation duel student who oh, yeah. essentially took, like, a Tem's deck, or Yugi's deck, and he was... I think he might have been voiced by a Tem's voice actor throughout the entire fight. Yeah, I think he was voiced by Dan Green. Um, or that, either that or his uh, voice actor was doing a very good impression. But yeah, GX definitely had the most references to D e, uh, the original Duel Monsters, and it really loved that series. GX is basically the high school alternate universe uh, kind of story. Technically. So, Technically, sequel because uh, the well, first it, it is the sequel. It takes place seven to ten years after the original Duel Monsters. When Kaiba yeah, because you meet because I think episode one starts with Yugi run going. I'm late. I'm late, and then runs uh, no. into Yugi. Or, oh okay. yeah, J Jaden. So, but yeah, and then Seto Kaiba looks the exact same ten years later as does Pegasus. Uh, who I guess Seto would be in his late twenties, Pegasus in his early thirties. So does that? Mean or that maybe he just uh, stays looking like that because he he because he he's in a constant state of fabulousness. Wait, isn't Yugi? Does that mean Yugi becomes has the same voice as a Tam? Uh, yes, it's yes. implied that Yugi's a descendant of a Tam. Oh shit! So you can say that you really hit him really really hard. Yeah. <laughs> But I guess back to or season two villains. Um, the D, he died. Sayu or Satorius was a lot of fun. But you know, fun fact about Satorius, he's 16 years old. Are you serious? What? <sighs> Look it up. He's 16. What oh my god, he is 16. Anime? He looks <laughs> he looks like a 30-year-old man. Yeah. Oh, then I retract my previous statement of of saying that Yugi hit pu that puberty hit Yugi really really hard. No, Sayu got hit with puberty really 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 hard. Like puberty so car crashed into him. No, then plane crashed. <laughs> and then being smacked by a ban hammer. Yeah, I think the big thing is that he's got those cheekbones. And he's also pretty tall. Also very sallow. That and when he makes that scary face with his hair moving upwards, it's like it even intensifies those features. I guess uh, Sayu himself wasn't terribly interesting. He had the backstory with Edo. Um, and he did make the cult, but what really inter was interesting about his character is how he turned the majority of the main cast to his side, like, he didn't turn, um, Hasselberry or Cyrus, and I will just say the only reason he didn't turn Hasselberry is because he had a dino bone in his leg, but, uh, he turned everyone yeah. else in the cast. Like, the maj I'm pretty sure 90% of the raw yellow dorm and the entirety of the obelisk blue dorm were in the Society of Light. Yep. That's a cult. Yep. I, I loved uh, one way they did it in the English dub where I think Chaz was literally doing like the screaming preacher type of thing 
trying to talk to everyone about the Society of Light and how it's helped them. And just, you know, they did a very uh, religious infomercial type. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. It was hilarious. He was literally that one fanat that one guy you meet at the at somewhere on the street standing on a soapbox saying, The end is near. You have seen the face of God. <laughs> oh, what they did with Chaz and the Society of Light was hilarious. I mean, the only reason he came back is he remembered he liked having stains on his clothing. <laughs> Alexis had her most interesting moments while in the Society of Light because she lost all pretense of being nice and they called her the Ice Queen and she got to use an ice deck which was uh, beautiful in of itself but she uh, was pretty interesting in how she manipulated people and honestly she, uh I think she was the reason a lot of people got into the Society of Light because enough of the main male characters had crushes on her that they just kind of converted f for her. Yeah. They were very, very desperate men. <laughs> She's pretty much the only female on the island that will actually hang out with the males. That and Blair, but she doesn't come in until season 3, and she's also 11. Yeah, it didn't... Isn't her introduction... Blair's introduction just... Yeah, I'm a boy, and I have a massive, massive crush on on Jaden. Or she had a crush on Zane, but... um. Oh. Yeah, her ba thing was she was eight, so she couldn't go to Duel Academy. And then during season two, I believe she dueled Chaz for the right to go to Duel Academy. Huh. Uh, but yeah. Oh, I guess uh, this was kind of a one-off fill-in. Bastion Mazawa had the best Society of Light member moment, where... Yeah, he decided that as a man of science, he, uh, he would listen to Dr. Eisenberg and he would cast away all of his clothes, unbleach his hair, and travel the world to find the answers to the universe. And we don't see him again until <laughs> midway through season three. He, was, he ran around Duel Academy naked. <laughs> uh... Oh, oh wait, Don. Oh yeah, I forgot. Don. Was it Don Zaluk? Yeah, Don Zaluk. Wasn't he a villain? Don Zaluk. I know Don Thousand, but that's sexual. Yeah, uh, Don Zaluk. Uh, yeah, he was a Shadow Rider. Oh yes, yeah, uh, season one. Is oh, he the boy? Yeah. He's the one that looks like an archaeologist, but he's actually the head, and he uses the Dark Scorpion deck, which again, he's actually the leader of oh, the and of the Dark the Scorpion thing. Walk. Yep, and he had the Christopher Walken voice. Uh, yeah. The golden eye patch that he wears is act is actually just a reference to the Millennium Eye. Mm-hmm. Yep, <laughs> we're jumping all over the timeline on this one, but. GX timeline doesn't really matter until season three. Yeah, besides, GX was probably filled like with, filled up with the most villains. I can't remember anything from Five Ds, so I won't. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, like, okay. So after that, I think we have you. I think you bells next. All right, so first is oh, Thelonious Viper, then there's uh, Dark World, Bra or Dark King Brown, then there's Supreme King, or Howe, and then Yubel, who was orchestrating literally all of that. Yep, we have Viper, who... Wait, we forgot Kag Kagemaru. Uh, no, we talked about him. Briefly. Oh, yeah, yeah. When he was but an old man, and then... Oh, yeah! Walking around the world naked. I forgot that he battled Jaden in nothing but a loincloth. <laughs> and he was... 
<laughs> and he was like super young and buff. Yep. He just wanted immortality. With the Sacred <laughs> Beast, which is actually a knockoff of the God cards. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. So we have the dark. We have the Mad King of the Dark World. Uh, I I guess do we want to go over Viper since he was the first one chronologically? Yeah. He was pretty interesting. I mean, he, his entire motivation was he was just trying to bring back his son by uh, skimming energy a little bit of energy from all the duelists at school, and the only reason his plan didn't work is uh, Amon or Adrian Gecko um, forced him to overdraw and put almost all of the student body into comas. Yeah. I guess Adrian Gecko was also a villain, but he died to one of to the bigger, better villains, so we don't really need to talk all that much about him. Yeah. Died <laughs> so quick. But will be missed. <laughs> For like a second. And then after that, we have... Is the Dark King Breon. Breon, Mad King of the Dark World, both as a character and I think as the card himself. Yep. He didn't do anything. He was just a really big setup for the Supreme King. <laughs> yep. He he basically just forced the cast to go find him because they thought he might have been holding Jesse. But um yeah, the main cast died and he didn't really matter anymore. Yep. And then we have the Supreme King, which actually a quote from him, and this is from the dub, or maybe translated from the sub, in order to defeat evil, one must become evil. In a world where, with the law of the jungle at work, one must rule with power if they wish to accomplish their goals. Yeah, that's definitely from the sub. But, uh, yeah, he's the big villain everyone remembers just because it's... Uh, break the cinnamon roll trope that everyone loves. Yeah, it was literally just... It was just Jaden getting really, really angsty. <laughs> I mean, how much of it's angst and how much of it's um, just pure, you know what? All of my friends are dead anyway? Screw it! I'm gonna become a tyrant! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like all the people I'm... I'm so happy. Like, all my friends are dead. Well, might as well be a tyrant. Be a, wear, wear armor and everything. Mm-hmm. And those who don't know what we're talking about, the Supreme King is actually Jaden. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. weird, because the, in the dub, at least, they have dialogue strongly implying that the Supreme King possessed him until the... Bastion comes in and says, oh, by the way, it was actually just you the entire time. And then Jaden's like, well, all right, I guess it was. Yeah. When If you're constantly smiling all the time, you need to have some repression and darkness in you. <laughs> they yeah. do foreshadow the Supreme King all the way back in season two, at least in the sub. They don't do it so much in the dub, but... Jaden's definitely selfish, and he doesn't really know how to properly read a situation or tell when to stop. And that just gets taken enough to the extreme where, in the focus of trying to find one friend, he sacrifices all the others. Then he finds out that other friend's dead anyway. Yep. Which, Bron was lying about that, but they don't tell you that until way later down the road. So much confusing. I prefer the manga. Uh. Oh, and on the wiki, oh, and on the inf on the page I am, there's thing. The trivia is like the Supreme King is similar to Dark Vader to Darth Vader. <laughs> I Which mean, I find that wrong. funny. I find that funny. So, I think after that, you bell. The reason we started with the reason why I why we started with villains first. 
Because I think it was this conversation that le- before this that led us to this topic as a topic in the podcast. Uh, I have heard the joke that no matter what gender you are, your bell makes you gay. Yes. Because she's either a trans woman or a non-binary dragon. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm looking at her design right now. Like, her right half of her chest is literally a boob, while the ri- while the left side is a male chest. Yeah, pectoral. Or- yeah, male pectoral. Yeah, uh, they censored every single appearance she had in the dub, so she had two boobs. Yeah, had two boobs when they w- when in reality she was meant to be so fucking gen like so neutral to the point that you would not know what her actual gender was. Yeah, I think she had two voice actors in the original, um, one really really deep male and one female. Yeah. And I think they might have just smashed those two together so that it would sound like both male and female. Yep. But no, in the dub, she is definitely feminine. I guess the big reason, though, is because she constantly talks about how much she's in love with Jaden and how much she wants to uh, love him and rekindle their relationship. And he taught her that the ultimate form of love is pain. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that like a vi- like? Wasn't that like an alien that she met when she was shot into space? Uh, she met the Society of Light. She met, like, Sayu. Oh. And he drove her crazy, so she uh, decided that pain is love, and acted all throughout season three accordingly. Yep. So, you could technically say she's a sadomasochistic transgender neutral dragon lady. She's a love machine. (laughs) Yep. She had... I really loved her duel with um, Jaden. It's one of the longer ones, and she gets a lot of interesting moves. I feel like she cheated, she's cheating because the only Ubel that can force your monsters to attack it is Terror Incarnate, but I believe her anime card does have a different effect written on it. Yeah, it's, uh, you need Ubel in order to have a Ubel Terror Incarnate. Yeah, there's uh, Ubel Ultimate Nightmare, you. I, I think it goes Ubel, Terror Incarnate, Ultimate Nightmare. But uh, she she definitely was one of the most questionable villains in just the manner she spoke and her motivations. Like, the entire time she was possessing Jesse, she used him to say some very interesting things to Jaden. Yeah, the things she said were... Very, very interesting that I'm not sure I can talk about on this on this channel. <laughs> well, in the not gist of it, I, I do think that J- Jaden said it well enough that, like, you know, real love isn't finite. It's large enough to fill the universe and, um, you know, basically telling her, I'm allowed to have uh, friends and even loves outside of you. But, you know, in the end, he still takes her into his soul and then rejects literally everyone else he knows. So she got what she wanted in the end. Yeah. She didn't get it the way she wanted it, but she still got what she wanted in the end. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, why I went for the UGG part, because I'm just gonna say it. That was a little bit stupid. Eh... What was stupid? Like, literally, uh, the idea of the moral of I can love somebody, uh, like, just having love for one person and that's it, and then go and then sticking to that, but then, like, all of a sudden go well, to becoming one with stars. What the fuck? And. Yeah. I mean, going by English dub standards, yeah, this is. The ending's very unsatisfying. The main character is just like, I love you. I'm dead now. Okay. Yeah. And but, should we talk about the villains in season four? No. Uh, dark? No. I don't want to. Okay, we're not talking about darkness. Okay. 
So, five of these! We literally start the plot immediately in the first episode. Which is a nice change of pace. Yeah, no one, two episode set, no, no one, no two to seven episode set up, and then plot. It's like, first episode, plot. What's the second episode? Plot and backstory for the main character as to why he's doing this. Third episode, yeah, he's facing the person he wants to fight already. So, the first season, I believe the villain was, was it Godwin? Yeah, it's Godwin. Yeah, all right. Uh, Rex Godwin. Which I think in the dub, they changed it to Rex Goodman. Goodwin. Yeah. Yeah, Goodwin. Um, I mean, Rex is another weird in terms of timeline, because he's not defeated until after the Dark Signer arc. Yeah, and I don't think you know... I don't think he's ever actually portrayed as a villain until after the Dark Signers. He's definitely something that's not good in the beginning, just because it's shown he's the one who manipulated Jack into um, betraying Yusei. Yeah, and he goes on this whole "We, we were, sir, you were, you were meant for a higher purpose." This whole, this whole mass, this plotting villain behind the shadows, but acting like a preachy. Preachman. Yep. He was uh, one of the big parts of the entire 5D's backstory. He's the reason Zero Reverse happened, which separated um, the city into the satellite and the city and made people in the city very racist against those in the satellite, I guess because they thought they were uh, radioactive. Maybe. And it's also where they like all of the trash and junk in the city goes to to the satellite and very luckily enough if you're working on the recycling plants you could find a card in the junk. Yep. Wow. Uh, going back over all these series I just now remember how many references to all this there are in arc 5. That one's going to be so much fun to go over. Yeah. Um but yeah, he Opposed the Daedalus Bridge, which connected the satellite and the city. Wait, wasn't he supposed... To... Oh, yeah, it's later shown that he was actually the one that built the Daedalus Bridge. Yeah. Um... Fighting is very much of a politic world. <laughs> like, not even joking. Out of all the series... 5D is the only one where it has a grim theme. Like, Yugi, uh, the world's modern, the, the game's getting really popular, GX. Let's, everything's great, we're gonna be doing a school about this kind of game now. 5D. Five. Everyone's racist world and you can't power. legally play this game. Exactly. Yeah. Or classist. Yeah, classist, slight with a little bit of racist um, in there, and... You and cannot then, play this game you if you're from the satellite. And then you go to Zico and you're like, yeah, colorful and everything. I mean, what the fuck? No. That was just a false salute. Uh, I yeah, guess since but... she was a villain in season one, Akiza, my favorite uh, villain. Yep, the psychic duelists, which they actually, which actually they had an entire game on the DS which was Secrets of our I think it was Secrets of Arcadia, where you played as a member of the Arca of Arcadia. Mm-hmm. Uh, she definitely was one of the most interesting villains. Uh, she was in an abusive relationship that manipulated her into becoming as violent and driven to seek pain as she was. Her parents, while well-meaning, uh, obviously didn't care enough for her and were somewhat embarrassed by her powers. And then... Powers. Powers are wasn't it awesome. more that they were scared? They were scared, yeah, but the big thing that uh, broke her is she saw that they were having a party um, while they had just sent her off to school all alone, and she thought that was just because they didn't want her there. 
oh, I remember that scene, and I thought it was just a quiet dinner with both of them laughing while she was not there. I could have sworn it was a party, but it's also been, like, six years since I've seen 5Ds. Yeah. It, mi it might have been either the party or the... Or the either way, her parents having were having fun without her, and she kind of broke. Yeah, that, and justifiably why they were scared, I mean... If you were having a, if you were the dad and having a duel with your, with Akiza when I think she was five or eight, and then she summons Giga Plant and then uh, she tells it to attack you directly and you get punched by Giga Plant re in reality and slammed into the wall, you'd be scared by that. Yeah, that's a problem that happens later down in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. The tangible holograms that really hurt people. And um, that can only be done by psychic duelists. Well, if, in 5Ds, they can only be done by psychic duelists, but... Yeah, it it's... I don't know, Aki was a really good villain. And then her reformation was done pretty well uh, up until the end of the Dark Signers arc. Yeah. Oh, and we also have the Dark Signers. Dark Signers, my favorite villains because they all have really great backstories and personalities. Um, the, my, my my favorite of the bunch, Carly Carmine. Carly was the best Dark Signer. Um, because she, she didn't start as a dark. She didn't start out as a Dark Signer and had yeah. a massive, massive crush on Jack. Yeah, she was a really interesting supporting character throughout season one, where you know, the big joke was that she had a crush on Jack, but she did do legitimate reporting work, and she did help the main characters find things that they wouldn't have been able to otherwise. In fact, the only reason she becomes a dark signer is in an attempt to help Jack, she looks up the files for the um, movement of Arcadia and gets thrown out of building. Wow. Thrown out a building right into a high pile of purple smoke. And then the was was it Misty Tread Treadwell that was the psychic? Misty was the model. Uh she might have been psychic. Yeah, but basically she, her yeah, little bro she, Yeah, she had a little bit with Carly when she first met her that she took off her glasses and and told her her future through the glasses. Uh yeah, I mean, her motivation was pretty interesting. Her little brother joined Arcadia, and he died, and she blamed Akiza for it, since Akiza was kind of the poster girl for Arcadia. Yeah. Um, then there's Griger, or Bomber, who was not originally a Dark Signer either, but became one after he was hung by Spiderweb. Yeah, he was hung by Roman Goodman's spider. Er, yeah, Roman. Uh, and he had a whale! Had a whale. And this whole deck was themed around water and said whale. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And then there was Ky Callan Kessler. And his big thing is he was part of Team Satisfaction, but he couldn't be satisfied. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll do but he, uh, his thing with the Enforcers was good in terms of um, it was all Trudge's fault that he was ever uh, un that he hated Yusei in the first place, which was a big misunderstanding and interesting because at that point Trudge was part of the um, supporting cast, but uh, I guess the big thing with him is that he... Uh, was it the duel against him the first time that sent you say like, a pull through his abdomen? Oh, I, I don't remember that one, but... Yeah. Uh, it, a pull uh, through his abdomen. Yeah, 5G, dark. Five times the darkness. <laughs> Hence why it's called five Ds. <laughs> five different kinds of darkness all rolled in one show. Five like dragons. You... Oh, it's technically five six. Five dragons. 
Also, you kind of see Misty Treadwell just like, like come, like going to Carly after she was thrown off the building. Yeah, I remember Carly was like, like in her bedroom for a little while after that, just kind of mulling it over. Like, I'm a dark signer now. Hmm. And then the duel with her and Jack happened, and I cried like a bitch. <laughs> Oh, God. scoop shipping is so amazing. Carly and Jack. It's such a shame that Carly's voice actress was part of a cult. Because uh, she originally was supposed to have more scenes. And they did her relationship with Jack so well. Then they just kind of had to write her out of seasons three and four. Yeah, because the voice actress was in a cult. And then, what other dark signers are there? We've got Callan, Misty, Carly. Uh, uh, Dev. Oh yeah, Monkey Man. He didn't matter. Let's move on. Uh, yeah. That's really, really actually, uh, he didn't have much good villains compared to the last two. Nah. I mean, it, there were a lot of problems in season three where there were the huge rewrites. The direct uh, Yoshida, a new director, came in. And they had to kind of pick up the pieces and still not be associated with the spanking cult. So we didn't actually get villains proper after the Dark Signers until, I believe, Zone? Is he worth it, though? Let's see. We technically also have the... Roman. Yeah, Roman, but we also had technically the Earthbound Immortals as, a, as villains in, the, in and out of themselves. But they are the Dark Signers. Like, they're the entire motivations, and they're what caused them to be evil. Except for Carly, which was just, yeah, you threw me off a building. I'm getting my fucking revenge by throwing you off a building. <laughs> In the most poetic... the mo I, I call that poetic revenge. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, Z1, a.k.a. Zone. Who I really think they should have kept with his original backstory that he was Yusei from the future, but, uh, yeah. So he paraded himself around as Yusei from the future, uh, had a bunch of robots, Bruno, or Antimony, and apparently Synchro Summoning was going to lead to the end of the world. Uh-huh. And... Uh -huh. He, uh, they couldn't give up card games. So, they just decided, screw the world, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Oh, wait, we forgot the three emperors. Uh, aren't they grouped in with Z1? Uh, yes, they are. No, they were like, they formed a different guy that wasn't Z1. Yeah, but if it's, if it's the same... If it's for the same motivation and they know each other, I think we can say they're kind. We can grow up the same I, thing. I think yeah. they were called. I think they're yeah. The three yeah, the three emperors of Iliaster. Yeah, I I think they're all in the same. Yeah, they're mech lords, general same motivation. Uh, if we want to, we can talk about paradox here since he's with that group. Oh uh, yeah, paradox. The he villain. Is of Bonds Beyond Time. The movie that had sp that had Pirate Hitler. And Anti only... dragons Yep. The Malefic Dragons. Uh, uh, they're the opposite of what they're supposed to be. Yeah, he's able to travel through time and space. I mean, honestly, there's nothing that Paradox really brings personality-wise that the other Mech Lord Emperors didn't bring, but he had an interesting enough character design, and Bonds Beyond Time was a fun movie. Yeah, uh, apparently his villain types are bigger, bad, time traveler, extremists. Like, I feel the extremist thing is a little bit fitting, because, yeah, I'm gonna take the most popular cards in history essentially the ones that caused all this bullshit in the future, and kill anyone that... and kill the people that essentially escalated to this bullshit. I mean, it, he didn't have to do it like he did. 
I'll give them like, okay, so you're going to take the cards that would eventually lead to the destruction or they were powerful enough to lead to the destruction of the universe. Okay. What, uh, so how are you going to end all this? Well, I'm just going to kill Pegasus. Okay, so why did you go and steal people's cards to begin with? Because dragons looks awesome. I cannot yeah. argue with that. Yeah, I mean, there's that, and white and eyes, with lucid red eyes. I don't think we. I don't think it was ever confirmed if Pegasus stopped the designing the cards. Uh, like, he, he he didn't. He kept designing cards until he died, and then Kaiba Corp kind of took over. Yeah, it was just like you, we even got a quick glimpse in five and not not five D's and GX on how he designs the cards. Like with this paint, like this advanced dual disc looking version of a artist's palette where all the paint are just there and he just moves every, he colors it with his own hands and all he just needs is a blank picture. Like yep. he, saw, he saw a giant, giant uh, stone carving or at least a carved on the wall version of Rainbow Dragon, and he said, okay, let's add some color here, and here, and here, and then the dual disc just went and spat out the Rainbow Dragon card. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, if that's how he, if that is how Pegasus himself designs the cards, I can see why he has so much fun doing it. <laughs> and I, that would even explain more his, uh, tune, his tune cards. Like, he just said, yeah, I draw all these realistic ones. I just want to have... I just made my own cards that look like actual cartoons. Hmm. Uh, yep. back, to the, back to the movie. Yeah. Bonds Beyond Time was good. It uh, had a few good... It had a few plot holes. It had three against one. Now, yeah, but it also had Paradox... Uh, with one deck against three people with three separate decks. Exactly. That was yeah, the but... entire movie. They didn't even stretch it out. They didn't even went whole Asian. They just went focusing nothing but that. Uh, well, I mean, the first, like, 30 minutes of the movie are mostly 5 Dsing. Uh, they spend maybe two to three minutes introducing Jaden and Yugi, but most of the movie is... You say versus Paradox, we introduce the other two Protags, we have uh, some shenanigans with them for about a minute or two, and then it's yeah. basically a 40-minute duel against Paradox for the end. Yeah, yeah. Didn't, didn't Jack actually say, didn't Jack made a comment on Yugi's hair saying, like, how was that, that was all the, ra was that the rage that back then? I think so, when he saw the news article, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it is established that uh, King of Games, Yugi, is, was still a thing and is... Uh, well, he was reading a news article, like, from the past. Also, yeah. I think 5Ds takes place, like, 50 years after Duel Monsters. What the fuck happened 50 years after Duel Monsters to cause an apocalypse? Uh, a nuclear reactor blew up. Yep, zero reverse. Too much dueling, too much... Uh, no, Zero Reverse wasn't dueling. That was just a nuclear reactor blew up. <laughs> yeah, and then they, and then the three king, the three kings of Iliaster said, if there's too much dueling energy, it could cause another Zero Reverse. <laughs> and then Yusei became a scientist and stopped that. I guess that's one interesting thing, and it's not really a villain's, but. Uh, in the end of 5Ds, only, I think, two or three of the main cast actually stay duelists. Yeah. That's good. 